Hey folks, Chris here with the Crab Apple Cottage. I just wanted to do a real quick video on dehydrating frozen fruit. So if you are new to dehydrating, frozen fruits and veggies are the easiest way to get started. So basically what I did is I'm trying to clean out my freezer. I'm having some problems with my um, my above the refrigerator freezer, the one in my kitchen. The door is not staying shut and some things are starting to melt if I'm not noticing it. And it's a bad a bad scenario. So I'm trying to empty it out, thinking maybe if there's less food in there, it might be I can maybe the door might shut better, or um, if I have to replace it, I want to get that stuff out of there. So I am dehydrating some frozen fruit. So I had about um, well, I guess a full bag of cherries, frozen cherries that were in there. I had a bag of peaches, which I opened up and were not good any longer. They were a couple years old actually, and um, I did taste them before I dehydrated them and realized that they did not taste good. So those had to go in the trash, unfortunately. And that's what happens sometimes when you have a freezer, especially if you have a backup freezer. Um, stuff gets buried. So I really want to spend some time going through my freezers and pulling out stuff and preserving it in, so that it's shelf stable. Um, so yeah, so I have a bag of cherries here on the left that I'm getting ready to dehydrate. And then on the right, I have um, what I think was four cups of wild black raspberries that I foraged um, in July. July of 2021. So I foraged, I foraged actually a lot more berries than that, but that's what we didn't end up eating. We ate a lot of cobblers and that sort of thing. So um, those are wild black raspberries, and there actually are some mulberries in there too. Um, let me see if I can find some mulberries. You can see here all the black raspberries. Um, I don't see any mulberries off the top. I did, I did see some earlier, and I think I ate them because <laughs> they, they just look so scrumptious. So those are the berries, and I just literally dumped them on, um, on the trays. Now I do have these little flat, um, I think they're called jerky trays or fruit leather trays that sit on top of my screens, just because with small stuff like this, it helps so it doesn't fall through the screen. So two trays of cherries, two trays of wild black raspberries with small berries thrown in. Just going to stack these up, um, turn on my Nesco dehydrator, and let them go. It's literally that simple. So if you are new to dehydrating, just grab yourself some frozen fruit or some frozen veggies and get going. So um, just give me a second here, and I'll get this thing started. Okay, so the trays are all stacked up. We're just going to put our lid right on top. It does have some clamps on the side that you can put on. There's my cat. Some clamps that you can put on, and then you just take the motor, put it down there like that, kind of give it a little twist, and it um, gets into the grooves, and then that's it. That's all that's to it. I'll let this get going, and then we'll see how long this takes to get this fruit dried. All right, so the fruit has been in for quite some time. The black raspberries didn't take that long to dry, but the cherries took a long time. And as you can see here... Um, the cherries are kind of cemented to the, to the, <laughs> I have to pick them off, are kind of cemented to the trays. And all of the juice um, came out and created this film. In retrospect, what I probably should have done is pureed the cherries. Um, did I call these strawberries? Cherries. Should have pureed the cherries and then spread the puree on the trays and made a fruit leather. I have not done fruit leather yet. So um, I wasn't really thinking along those lines, but that's probably what I would do next time with this. But we did um, dehydrate the cherries. So two, two trays of cherries. You can see how much they shrank, right? Because when I put the cherries on here, it was like full. And then I have two trays of the black raspberries with some rogue mulberries in there. So I will package these up. I will probably put them in um, ball jars and seal them with my vacuum attachment. Okay, so I've got my two jars of dried berries. These are the black raspberries. They just barely fit in this small jar. And then here are the cherries. Um, I did get them off the trays. So what I'm going to do now is I do have these little um, screw-on lids, which are great. You can pick these up at Walmart. Um, the Ball brand also makes some gray lids, but I prefer these little white ones from Walmart. So if it's something that I'm going to be using regularly, I can just store them in the jars with these lids. However, um, we're probably not going to use this fruit right away. So I'm going to go ahead and seal them with my food saver attachment. So you buy this as a kit and you get two sizes. You get the wide mouth jar attachment and you get the regular mouth jar attachment. So it's pretty simple. You just take your lid. I usually use um, 
old lids that have been used for canning, but I was out of those, so I'm going to use this new lid. So I just place it on there, and I place the jar attachment right over the top, and then this is a battery, or sorry, a rechargeable um, food saver attachment. You can also use the large food saver vacuum sealers, um, and you can also use a manual brake bleeder, which is good if you want something that you can use off-grid, um, and I am planning to get one of those, but I just don't have it yet. So you just take the top off, or the bottom has this little nozzle. You stick the nozzle right there in the jar, hold it down so it's tight, and then just hit the button on top. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And you just kind of listen to it. Um, when you have one of the large food saver vacuum sealers, I think it stops automatically, but with this one, you just kind of have to listen to it. And there you can hear the change in the sound. I don't know, that didn't, that didn't actually make the seal sound. Let's see here. Yep, there we go. So see, the lid is on there. You really have to kind of pry it to get it off. Let's see. I actually think I'm going to seal that again. It didn't have quite the seal that I wanted to. Make sure the rim is clean. This comes out sometimes, so I just stick it back in. I'm going to try sealing this again. I'm having issues today. All right. Let's see here. Hmm, that doesn't sound like it's sealing. I don't know what's going on. All right, let me try the cherries, see what's going on here. All right. That sounds better. You can hear the difference in the sound. And you hear that sound when I pull it out? That's how I know that it's vacuum sealed. Listen again. Yeah, so that's definitely vacuum sealed. Hmm, I have to figure out what's going on with those bear, those black raspberries. So there we go. The cherries are sealed up. Um, we'll probably eat those as a snack, but maybe not right away. We also could use them to make a cherry cobbler or a cherry pie. Um, but those are good for months. I had some apples that I dehydrated and I didn't even seal them. I just kept them in, um, Ziploc bags and they lasted like nine months before I ended up using them all. So, um, these will definitely last a while. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how to get this last one, um, sealed up. Um, but that's basically how you do it. That's how you dehydrate frozen fruits and veggies. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.